Hi, and welcome to another episode of Live Arts with Mr. John. Uh, today I am at the North Pocono Trails, and we're going to be doing some of the earth art that I talked about last week. Uh, so let's have a look around. So for today's art project with earth art, um, I really have come out here with uh, no expectation of what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm just going to kind of look around and enjoy the hike out here and just see what's available to me and maybe what I can create with it. So yeah, it's going to be a learning experience for myself and for those watching. When doing earth art, um, it's important to have some tools available to you, um, preferably a camera, uh, maybe some kind of a writing utensil or a sketchbook. Uh, thankfully, with the invention of cell phones, uh, we have all those kind of in one spot, so it's a lot more convenient. Now, I'm lucky enough to have a, a trail like this uh, right down the street from my house. Um, some of you may have the same luck as I do with that. If not, there's no worries. Uh, again, you can go to uh, a local park. Um, you can go to... Pretty much anywhere where you can find nature, even your backyard, and just again use what's available to you. Um, use that as an opportunity to figure out what's available and how you can utilize that to make some really good art. So another important thing too when you're considering earth art is while it's a good idea maybe sometimes to have a game plan uh, before coming out and trying something, you don't necessarily have to. Uh, this is supposed to be a relaxing experience and you're just again trying to see what's available to you and what you can do with it. So just to show you, as far as materials, we see a lot of uh, downed leaves already. Um, you can look for branches like this. Um, one rule of thumb, especially when you're trying to respect spaces like this, is not to really use anything fresh. So any of these like green plants that are here or, you know, branches on trees uh, that still have life in them or still growing, you don't necessarily want to rip those off. Just some other tips. I mean, we have stones here as far as materials. Uh, maybe even utilizing if you have a running water source like this creek here. Um, all these can be part of the earth art as well. Um, what I would advise, uh, especially if you're in the woods, uh, if you are picking up heavy stones, just be cautious of wildlife. Um, snakes like to rest under big stones, so just be aware of your surroundings and what you might be disturbing in the process. So I just wanted to show you this. Um, so a lot of people that have been coming up out here have been trying to celebrate nature in their own way. So there is a, a lot of painted stones with uh, positive messages or just positive imagery. And it's not that it's bad because at least they're trying to become more involved in nature and you know enjoying this space that maybe they haven't explored before. But just be aware, especially if you're using uh, paints of any kind, that they're non-toxic, that it's not gonna hurt. Uh, the ecosystem around it or animals that are around. Uh, just be cautious if you're going to try painted rocks. The other thing with that too, um, technically I guess it could be considered earth art. Um, for traditional earth artists, the idea is not to use any man-made substances or tools, so the paint kind of throws that out the window a little bit. Um, but it's still just another way of appreciating nature. But for earth art, um, you're not really supposed to use any tools at all uh, when you're doing it. Just, again, what's available around you. So if you can fashion a tool, that's fine. You just can't bring, like, a hammer or, like, a, a pocket knife or anything and do it that way. 
So I've been on this path for about uh, a half a mile now, and I came across this. So these are like little stone towers, also known as cairns, uh, by some. And we have a couple in place along this uh, really interesting tree that's kind of uh, bent down at a weird angle. Uh, so this would be something that would be more along the lines of earth art. So someone came here and they kind of uh, decorated this tree with the, the stones that were around and made some uh, interesting balancing acts, uh, which is even cool because like I said, it's balanced on that branch there. Uh, so this is just someone's beat me to it a little bit. So we have some earth artists out here already. We can also kind of see some of these statues, uh, especially along creeks, uh, where there's plenty of stones, uh, especially if you live near like a, a rocky creek bed like this. So we could see some of these towers. So these rock towers or uh, cairns, as they're sometimes called, they're they're pretty much either trail markers that can be used for sometimes. Um, sometimes it's just to be pretty and just to be decorative. Uh, sometimes they're even uh, maybe a personal memorial or a, a local memorial as well. Uh, so they can have very different meanings uh, depending on who made it and why they made it. All right, so I'm about a, a half mile out uh, down the trail. Um, I found this nice little stop here along the creek side. Um, we're in a little bit of drought, so a lot more of the, uh, the creek bed stones are able to be seen here. Um, I'm gonna try doing some stone work with this. I think I, I've kind of been inspired by some of the other pieces that we've seen along this um, path here. So I'm gonna try something. I'm gonna try doing a stone arch though and see how that turns out. So wish me luck. So the idea is I'm trying to get some stones that look uh, pretty close in size and I'm going to find is to build a structure that these are going to kind of arch around and then slowly pull the stones that are supporting it and hopefully if it's arched correctly they should hold up by themselves so I'm going to give it a shot. All right, so I've tried for about 20 minutes uh, and ended up with a pile of rocks. <laughs> uh, wasn't able to get it to arch up. Uh, I could continue uh, to keep doing it, uh, but sometimes, like I said, sometimes your idea might fail or maybe you just don't have the skill set at the moment to, uh, you know, make an arch when you need to. Um, and it's okay. Again, part of this is failure. Part of this is experimenting. Uh, I know my limitations right now as far as rocks. I might have to work up to maybe doing an arch. Uh, I could still use the stones right now and maybe try to make uh, just a little balancing tower uh, like everyone else just to do something. But uh, I think I'm going to move on. We're going to try something else uh, before we end this. All right. It's been about 20 minutes. Um, I actually ended up finding some sticks, uh, which you can naturally find in the woods like this. Um, I went back to that creek source. I ended up making this. Uh, so I don't necessarily know what it is. It's just these three branches. Um, there's kind of this triangle that comes up and it kind of has like a, a wooden roof to it. Kind of like a lean-to or some kind of shelter of some sort. I'm not really sure, uh, but it was really easy to make. Um, you can see the joints, uh, kind of where the, the twigs broke. They were just snapped, and that's what's holding everything into place and holding everything upright. It's just those three joints right there. And then it kind of had this nice little triangle shaped, so I kind of just filled it in and made a, a little uh, 
roof out of it. Uh, I'm going to see, maybe I have some of those stones from before right over here. I might move some over and maybe just place a couple around it and just see how I feel. All right, it's been about 30 minutes. Um, I ended up just keeping the little structure that I had right there and just putting a couple little um, rock cairns around it. Uh, three of them just kind of go along with our three-sided uh, little wooden structure there. So let's see what it looks like up close. So you can see it's just like three mysterious little rock towers and then you have this little structure in there and it might resemble kind of like a, a shrine or some kind of memorial uh, but I mean it's definitely someone might come across this and they're gonna be like huh that's interesting why did someone make this and it might invoke questions and or maybe they'll feel inspired and try something very similar um, now, the thing about this is, again, because it was all made from natural materials, I'm just going to leave it here. Um, most likely, uh, if we do get rain, the water is going to come along and just wash it away. Um, maybe another hiker will kick it over. But uh, unfortunately, at this point, this is where it is at its prime. So I am going to take a photo of it before it uh, decays. But um, that's the only way we'll be able to remember it after this. And that's it. Um, after this point, um, you're welcome to stay in the spot that you're in. You can kind of meditate on it. You can meditate on the process of making it. Um, or you can just kind of meditate on your way back home, which is what I'm going to do. Because uh, I've been out here for almost an hour now. And I'm still about a half mile away from where I was. Which isn't too far. But, yeah. That is the whole point of Earth Art. So, again, I had some expectations at first to maybe try doing a rock archway um, that did not go well um, the rocks did fall over um, in the end though I was able to use the rocks that I found so that was kind of cool um, and like I said I was able to come up with a, a new idea pretty fast and it's really not that hard again when you're when surrounded uh, by a lot of rocks a lot of sticks uh, you can even just draw in the dirt you can make patterns out of leaves. You can make patterns out of pebbles. Um, there is a lot available out here. You just kind of have to go in with an open mind. And from there, maybe just try out some ideas. And if they fail, that's okay. Um, it's not really about the success of the art. Um, after all this, if you didn't really create anything, that's fine. If it, all your plans failed, that's fine. But hopefully it gave you uh, more of an appreciation for the outdoors, for nature itself, um, for what it's capable of, uh, for some of the beauty that it's capable of, and maybe some of the creativity that it can inspire. And that itself is the whole purpose of Earth Art. Um, just kind of being outside, enjoying your surroundings, enjoying everything around you, and maybe being inspired to be a little creative here and there. So I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I hope you go out and maybe try it, and again, doesn't have to be in the woods. You can go to a park. You can go in your backyard. Um, whatever is available to you. And hopefully you will create some stuff. And hopefully you can share it too um, with someone else. Uh, but that's all I have for today. And until next week, take care.